Alex is a game with a mission. Push the market forward. Push technology forward. It's rather fitting. Half-Life 1 broke new ground with experiential storytelling. Half-Life 2 innovated with its physics-based mechanics and then evolved on its predecessor. Alex then has done something remarkable. It is the best of Half-Life 2. It is the best of Half-Life 1, and it is also the best of virtual reality. This is a game where everything has came together as it should, and through a series of smart design decisions, Valve have created one of gaming's most compelling experiences. Today, you are going to learn why. First, a disclaimer. You are only viewing one eye in this video. There will be times where it looks like I'm not aiming, but in reality, I'm just aiming with the eye that is not the one being recorded. Also, the UI elements that you see are only for the spectator mode, so I don't actually see them when I'm playing, and the field of view in that mode is relatively low. Alex, I think, does look great when viewed in 2D, but based purely on the visuals of watching a video of somebody playing Alex, frankly, it does not hold a candle to experiencing it yourself. So if you're to judge purely based on visuals, take them with a grain of salt, and with that said, let us begin. For me, any Half-Life review has to start with the atmosphere. Half-Life 1 and 2 nailed that, and let me tell you, the oppressive, bleak City 17 has never been executed this well. Across the board, the visuals are on point, whether you are stuck in the sewers, overran with organic growths, or in the bleak, dismal city itself. Half-Life 2 did that, yes, but Alex, by being VR, gained so much more from Valve's natural world design strengths. The sense of perspective when you look up at the combined structures that dominate the skyline. The ability to see that creepy sewer growth, but then to lean into it, to look around it, to feel how fully dimensional it is. Across the board, in all aspects of Alex, this holds true. Take a great world, make it VR, and it will feel fantastic. Do a set piece of a combine walker, throw it in VR, and yeah, of course it's going to leave a lasting impression. That all makes sense, and I think to a degree, that's something you will have known from just watching the trailer. But what takes Alex to the next level, though, is how Valve use the medium itself. The level of interactivity within the environments, such as, say, when you're rummaging for supplies, enhances your connection to those environments. You are just paying more attention. Objects act like objects with your hands. With the Valve Index's pressure-based controllers that have full grip support, it just works. Perhaps a door is barred, so what? You grab your hands around it and you pull the bar out with your hands. You are less of a press E and do the thing video game god in this game. And that fosters a sense of you being both vulnerable, but also being in charge, which when combined with the game's excellent atmosphere, creates a deeply immersive experience. It really does feel like you are there. It's almost less about using VR gimmicks, and it's more about every small detail, scale, perspective, 3D audio, lighting, verticality. It's all perfectly implemented for virtual reality. The granularity of door movements as you slowly, slowly move them open. The way that they creak, water dripping around you. The way new sights are revealed to you. That sense of scale. Often in games, it's less about the ideas and it's more about the implementation of those ideas. And here, the subtleties of Valve's implementation are what carry the day, leading to one of the most immersive experiences in gaming. Yet, for all that abstract talk, 
Alex is a VR game, so beyond the richness of its world and all of that, we still have to judge it based on how well it uses the unique strengths of the medium. And thankfully, this is where Alex is at its strongest. Like many VR games, reloading your gun is just fun. You pop the shotgun open, you fill it with two shells at a time, you snap it back, and you cock it. Yes, that is satisfying. The pistol, however, shows that Valve did a little bit more than just make a fun reloading procedure. Normally, it just loads like a pistol. Slamming in a new mag in the heat of combat is exciting, yes, but after getting the ammo reserve upgrade, well, things change. Reloading once puts that mag's ammunition into the reservoir pool. You then drop that mag out of the gun, you pop a new one in, and then that mag is just in the gun. And because of the reserves, that gives you two magazines worth of ammo in your gun at once. And it's the specifics here. It's the way the gun fills up, the way that it's reflected on the actual weapon model that is pretty much perfect. Now, in a regular game, extended mags is just a pretty boring upgrade. In Alex, though, it's far more. It changes how you reload, and it gives you more options. Slap a mag in quickly and get firing in the heat of combat, or totally fill your gun up with two mags. Little things like that just show that they've been thinking a bit more deeply about how to uniquely use the strengths of VR for this gaming experience. So that's a little bit about the guns. Of course, their biggest feature, and the one you probably notice the most in the trailers, are the gravity guns. They feel better to use than they look, and they look cool. You see, it's not just that you pull an item and it's magically slurped into your hand. It's not just a ranged pickup, no, it's quite a bit more interactive. You grab the item and you pull it towards you with a flick of the wrist. Then the item is set in a trajectory towards you. But then you've got to physically grab it when it gets near you by squeezing the controller, basically by reaching out to grab it. It's completely natural once you get used to it, and it feels so, so good. More in this when we get into combat. Staying on the topic of Valve's use of virtual reality, the health syringes are the best that I've ever used in a game. And that might seem like an absurd statement, absolutely, but bear with me. When you get one of these syringes and you want to use it, you've got to activate it by actually turning it on. And then you've got to actually put the syringe into your character's body, which is also your body. So right when you hear the syringe hit and activate in-game, what happens? You actually feel it on your own physical body, you feel the controller haptics, and you hear the audio. Essentially, short of actually shooting you up with something through the controller, this is as immersive as it gets in gaming right now. I mean, hell, in Alex, even the regular health regeneration is no slouch. Mini games are often a staple of virtual reality, and they often do have a well-deserved bad rap in regular 2D gaming. In Alex, though, they're actually quite fun. In this game, you solve many problems with your multi-tool. Now, this could be rerouting power by tracing wiring in walls and actually rerouting it. And this is complete with excellent audio and haptics or maybe, say, hacking into combine terminals by uh, connecting lines on a ball, drawing nodes, drawing lines between nodes on a weird ball. Okay, they don't exactly make literal sense, but as little mini games, they're actually quite fun, and they serve as a welcome break from the stress of merely existing within City 17's quarantine zone. Past these minigames, though, there is a great physicality to just about all of the game's interactions. Using terminals involves pulling things around, inserting, say, strange organic power disks, and then rotating a beam through them. Opening combine doors feels great because of Valve's excellent animation work. Combine all of this with the default immersiveness and interactivity of the world, even, say, opening something up to rummage around it, and you are left with a shockingly engrossing experience. Essentially, after a very short warm-up period, 
all of these mechanics become totally natural. They're extensions of your body. They are just things that you know how to do. You no longer have to think about them. You're doing it as if it's real. World interactions basically never feel like you're pressing the use key in a game. And that is a remarkably immersive thing and a massive strength for this game in particular. At least almost all of the time. So far, I have found everything that I've just said to hold true 95 to 99% of the time. Sometimes you'll just have something be a little bit fiddly. You know, getting your arms stuck in a door, that kind of thing. It is a little bit frustrating and immersion breaking when it does happen, but thankfully such occurrences are rather rare once you actually get the hang of it, especially if you are someone who is a bit of a virtual reality native like myself, where really I've been used to doing this stuff for years, so when I finally get a game that just has it all implemented near perfectly, it does just feel natural. That's how you interact with the world using your hands, but how do you actually move through it? Well, the answer here is however you'd like. Alex supports two modes of teleportation, as well as head and controller-based thumbstick movement. Now, personally, I opted for the thumbstick and it being based on the orientation of my controller. And that means that I can walk forwards in the game while looking to my side. Now, for the uninitiated, this is likely the most nauseating way to play. But for me, as a VR veteran who's been used to this for years, I was able to play for four hours straight with zero motion sickness. Overall, for me, locomotion in Alex works very well. You can jump on things, you can mantle on things, and you can get around the world essentially with ease, and it's all very well implemented. With everything that I've said so far in this review, you know what the atmosphere of Alex is like. It's half life at its peak, implemented perfectly, and you know what the virtual reality stuff is like, but this is not a tech demo, this is a full-blown game. So, what is Alex actually like as a full game experience? I would start by saying that Alex very much is a Half-Life game. You've got a place to go and you've got a world to move through. And as you move through that world, you will find plenty of combat, puzzles, and some set pieces. It very much does feel like Half-Life 2, but without the open spaces. Uh, no spoilers here, but as you move through your quest, let's just say, you'll be guided by an ally who will talk in your ear. One who is rather funny, who has moments of humanity, and generally does keep you coming. Company. He's a welcome presence, especially when you're in the midst of the game's most spooky areas. Ah, excellent. Alex, have you ever heard of a club sandwich? Uh, nope, not once. Right. To make a club sandwich, you need to start with bread. In terms of story and vibe and broad game layout, it truly is Half-Life, and I think most of you will understand what that means. So, let's get into the actual details. Core gameplay balances combat, exploration, and resource management. Playing on the hardest difficulty, ammo is rather scarce, heavily incentivizing you to rummage about the place and to play smart by targeting enemy weak spots. Exploration is further incentivized by resin, a resource that is used in the weapon upgrade system that is found in nooks and crannies. And seriously, between resin and ammo, and other things like grenades and syringes, explore everywhere in Alex. You need those things. Smash crates, peer inside barrels, go into side rooms. It's hard to convey just how much you will feel that need to completely exhaust the resources of your environment. You see, in two dimensions, the prospect of going up against enemies with low health and low ammo is fine. It might be a bit stressful, but it's not going to cause a severe physiological response from you. You. In VR, though, that zombie, who will be serious trouble if you miss a single shot, or maybe a few shots, well, that zombie is taller than you are. It towers over you. You have to look up with your head to actually look at its head. Oh, and then there's likely the head crab that you can hear scuttling around behind you with the 3D audio. It's stressful, it's intense, and it's a powerful incentive to explore and to be prepared. Of course, that is how Alex, being 19 years old and not wearing Gordon's hazard suit, would actually feel in that situation. Games are, at their best, their most immersive when player and character are in sync. 
This is something that Alex achieves mechanically through the balance of its resource management, its exploration, and its combat. Speaking of which, let's talk about combat. Alex keeps you on edge, and it is clear that great care has went into actually making it work for virtual reality. And making this work for VR has meant that, befitting of you not being kitted out like Gordon, are dealing with smaller encounters. Smaller, but just as, if not a little bit more intense. And while slower experientially, Alex can be right up there with Doom Eternal in terms of how completely engrossed you are in the combat sandbox. Headcrabs are headcrabs, yes, but unlike in two dimensions, well, you can dodge around them with your whole body. That adds a level of just reflexes and immersion that is really hard to top anywhere else. It really does not feel like you're just tapping W or tapping S to, you know, sidestep them. Alex then introduces armored headcrabs, which have got a one-hit-kill weak spot on their underside. Now, hitting that spot involves standing still, waiting for them to hop up on their legs ready to jump, and then shooting them. Of course, if you miss that shot, well, you'll have a headcrab flying towards you, which really is a rather stressful thing. Then for zombies, well, zombies are zombies, yes, but many have got one-hit-kill weak spots. Combine that with the very real-feeling aiming, and you've got serious stakes, especially with how scarce ammunition can feel. Now, if those zombies get close, it's not like you've got a crowbar to easily dispatch them with, or a big suit of armor that makes you feel like you're very strong, and that does make those zombies feel more dangerous than in the other Half-Life games. This is all elevated by how you need to then, in the midst of combat, manage your resources and even just reload your weapons. And even if you've got a grenade, well, using it is not just the case of hitting the G key. You've got to grab your grenade, activate your grenade, and physically throw it. Then, of course, you've got to run away. And the same goes for healing up with a syringe. And let me tell you, healing up with a syringe in one hand while shooting your gun with the other feels pretty badass. And then this really starts to come together when maybe you're in combat combat, you're firing your weapon, but then you see some ammunition and you use your grav gloves to pull that over and to reload your gun in the middle of combat. It's a fairly unique feeling and actually executing that is something that is just uniquely compelling within virtual reality. Moving on to the regular combine soldiers and their heavier variants, well, they do behave as expected, but of course, relative to Half-Life 2, they do feel a lot stronger and a lot more lethal. Again, reinforcing how Alex is not Gordon, how Alex is not a HEV suit wearing survivor handpicked by the G-Man. Yet, while you are weaker, once you master the game's mechanics, you actually hit those weak spots regularly, and you start using your environment to your advantage, and you're peeking around corners, you do actually feel strong. You you do feel how Alex would feel. Almost more than anything, and especially within the context of combat, Alex is a testament to the power of the mastery loop in gaming. That feeling of satisfaction and power when a player actually learns. I mean, sure, better reflexes in a bullet hell game are pretty incredible and do feel great, but there is something to be said for masterfully throwing grenades, grav gloving resources to you, and hitting weak spots when it feels that physical and that intuitive. That's not all for combat, though. There are new enemies in this game. Alex introduces you to more enemies as time passes, like the lightning guys. They dart around, they fire lightning at you, and then when you shoot them, they'll disappear in a puff of smoke. And if there are zombies nearby, they'll inhabit those zombies, getting a whole new set of mechanics and only being forced out of the zombies' destroyed bodies once you've destroyed new weak spots that appear in the host. And once you've dealt with one of them, well, then you'll have to deal with multiple of them, plus extra zombies, and maybe some headcrabs, and that is when the combat sandbox and the unique combinations of enemies really do start to feel different and really do feel intense. So, to draw all of these elements together, you have flawless VR combat with second-to-second -second fighting that is stressful and intense in just the right way, all backed up with satisfying weapon mechanics and usable items. The resource balancing is impeccable, encouraging you to fully explore the most detailed Half-Life world that we've ever seen. Level design is, again, pretty much flawless in this. Valve have done a fantastic job at throwing you into varying combinations of a 
smallish number of enemies, but in a wide range of environmental layouts. Crawling through dark sewers, led only by your wrist flashlight. Traversing four floors of a hotel where they had crab nest at that bottom floor and barnacles all over the place. Just about every encounter space feels different in this game, and to encapsulate that in a way that I think you'll immediately understand, this is not a game that gives you that copy-paste feel when you get into a new combat scenario. Thus far, we really have covered all elements of Alex without actually going into spoilers. I would say this, Half-Life Alex achieves what's arguably the most important thing that a game like it can do, putting you in the shoes of its protagonist. The level of immersion, as reinforced by its high-level design and low-level implementation, is near perfect. Half-Life Alex is a fitting name indeed. When you're playing this game, you are Alex. You are that character. Seriously, the level of immersion is, it is honestly just next level. It is a cut above what most of us are used to. This is now the benchmark virtual reality game, clocking in at around 12 hours of full blown, full quality, no holds barred Half-Life content. This is what we've been waiting for, a full expansive experience in VR. This isn't just a side curiosity, this is its own full game just as much as Half-Life 2 was its own full game, and as compared to Half-Life 2, Alex arguably pushes the industry forward because here, VR is not a gimmick. It is fully integrated with the character, the gameplay mechanics, and the overall fantasy. This truly is one of the most unique experiences that I've had. Not just in gaming. This is next level, and I can recommend this game wholeheartedly to anyone who can play it. And wow, just what an experience making this review has been. Writing it's been a blast, recording it's been a blast, and man, playing Alex has just been an absolute treat. Seriously, something that I will remember. Now, I understand most of you don't have VR gear, and I was playing this on the Valve Index, which, yeah, is pretty expensive, and even if, you know, the cost makes sense for you, they've been hard to get. They've pretty much been back-ordered since Alex was announced. There is good news, though. If you want an incredible Half-Life experience, you can pick up Black Mesa. You can pick up uh, Half-Life 1, Half-Life Source, or, of course, Half-Life 2. They're all pretty darn affordable, and they're all incredible experiences. And there are parts of when I was playing Alex where I really just thought back to Half-Life 1, and I really thought to myself, Wow, this would work in VR. Now, I don't mean a direct translation, but what I will say is that crawling around Black Mesa, where everything feels new and scary as the whole thing falls down around you, I mean, put in that flourish of VR that we've shown in Alex, you know, change a few of those mechanics, and certainly the setting and theme of Half-Life 1, of going through Black Mesa, I think it would work perfectly in VR. So, Valve modders, maybe if you're feeling like something you want to do after this, I mean, I certainly wouldn't complain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like more content like this, please do let me know. You can hit that sub button if you want to check out more stuff. Hit that like button if you want to support our channel. Thank you for watching this video, and with that, I will see you next time.